Hello, this is Oleg Polisenka and Market Access Insider Channel. In our programs, we discuss organization and financing of healthcare services and medical technologies in European countries. Today, we're in Paris, in France, and we're going to talk to Michel Verasselt, the founder and CEO of Meditech Access France, one of the leading French consulting companies. We're going to cover a broad range of topics, including the organization and financing of healthcare system, DRG and add-on reimbursement, as well as innovation funding schemes. Hope you will enjoy the program. Michel, thanks for joining us on this program. So, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. Can we start with the general overview of the French reimbursement system for medical devices? Um, yeah, so uh, you know that uh, so the French system is a DRG system, so it's a typical one. Uh, it's not the same coding system as uh, the one you can find in Germany or other European countries, but uh, this DRG system is focused on hospitalization and certain devices and drugs. Uh, what is uh, really specific to France is on top of this DRG funding, you have uh, two other mechanisms. So the one is the one that will specifically reimburse uh, expect, expect, ex, expensive and uh, innovative uh, devices. It's called uh, LPPR, the, which is a kind of uh, add-on reimbursement on top of the DRG. Um, the other thing is uh, the coding system, which is also very typical. It's called the CCAM. Uh, the specificity of these uh, coding systems, so actually which uh, objective is to fund uh, the uh, healthcare professionals, but uh, in the same time, it aims at, uh, like in uh, the other DRG systems, at be, being used for the DRG coding. So, but the fact that it's also the 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 the, the, the fee, the, the the fee for the H, uh, HCP means that uh, they will uh, reinforce the complexity. For, 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 for getting these, these codes. And also it at its own uh, reimbursement pathway. Mm -hmm. well, so we have an, another uh, package which is called the MIGAC, uh, which is specifically de dedicated for uh, funding, uh, short-term funding, and also um, innovation funding. Mm -hmm. All right. Who are the key stakeholders in the system? So they are, I would say, um, three. Uh, we have the uh, Ministry of Health. Ministry of Health is the regulator and uh, also you have to consider the Ministry of Health uh, into three different departments which are, which are uh, very well defined and separated. One is a hospital organization, the other one is the social security regulation and the third is the general health care. So, Objectives of these uh, three departments are sometimes antagonists because if you want to treat the French population uh, through uh, vaccines or through uh, new treatments, which is the DGS, the healthcare department, it may cost more money. Uh, and then, of course, the social security department will react sometimes because of the cost. So, I mean, they have organized the system into these three different departments. So that's one stakeholder. Uh, the other one is the CPS, the Economical Committee, which is a little bit specific, even if it's uh, uh, located within the French Ministry of Health. Actually, it responds to three different uh, ministries, industry, budget, and health. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so this is the, the committee which is responsible for the tariffs, uh, tariffs negotiation. The last one, it's a completely independent institution. It's the French HTA, Health, Health Te Technology Assessment Agency, which is called HAS, Haute uh, Autorité de Santé, High Healthcare Authority. And the High Healthcare Authority is responsible for the, um, for the evaluation. So they make their own independent evaluation. So, but uh, unlike other countries, this evaluation is uh, executed uh, upfront before reimbursement, not afterwards. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we discuss uh, the most typical pathways for medical technologies in France? Um, I would say, uh, well, I mean, when you want to uh, 
enter the French uh, system, first question is, okay, so uh, of course you have to ask whether you have CMARC or not, because if you don't have CMARC, there's absolutely not, not, no possibility. Then you have to consider whether your product is eligible to the LPPR mm -hmm. or if it's already reimbursed within a DOG. Mm -hmm. So this is the first question. So um, then once you have the answer, imagine that you are eligible to the LPPR. There are two different ways of being reimbursed on the LPPR. One is a brand name. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that the product will be specifically reimbursed with uh, the brand, its own coding, and of course, uh, get its own price that the competitors will not be able to use. And of course, this is the longest pathway, but in the same time, it's worth doing it because if you get a reimbursement, you're on top of the RG. It means that once you get it, there will be no local negoci price negotiation because the price is already set. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other benefit is that you're alone, you're protected during a certain period of time. So it's worth investing in the LPPR, I would say. Of course, the investment will be get enough clinical evidence so that you will be eligible. So this is the challenge. Um, so then the last uh, pathway is the generic uh, inscription on the LPP. It means unlike this brand name, if you're on generic, it means that they are already a line which has already its coding, its price, and it's no specific brand written on the code, but it's a, a general description. So if the product uh, has this description, it can just take the code with a C mark. We have to declare to the um, security agency and you can sell. All right. So that's uh, LPPR related pathways. So what about creation of the code and integration into the DRG system? Okay, so uh, yeah, so the other question, uh, 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 when, once you know that you are on the LP, LPPR pathway, for example, is to consider whether you have already a CCAM code or not. If you don't have any code, then it's a little bit more complex. It used to be very, very complex because the pure coding pathway is something that you don't, as an industry, as a company, you don't control. You have to go through a medical uh, society or hospital association, which makes it, makes it a little bit more complex because you don't have the control. So that, that's the first difficulty. The second difficulty is like, unlike in Germany or Netherlands or Switzerland, so you have to, your coding has to be evaluated and it's not considered as a priority. So it can take some time to be first eligible, then the time to get through the HAS evaluation, and, and that, that can be complex. So, but now, uh, for medical devices, when the company submit a dossier to make it, uh, to, to, to get the reimbursement for the device, the evaluation of the code will be executed in parallel without getting through these, uh, uh, medical uh, society process. So it's a little bit longer than the pure medical device process, but it's a lot easier than, uh, than, than before. All right. Uh, what are the typical timelines for LPP? Okay. Um, so the official timeline is 180 days uh, altogether. That's the official, but in reality, and these 180 days, uh, well, be between the submission to the registration on the official journal of the final price. This is 180 days, 90 days for the HAS evaluation and 90 days for the CPS nego price negotiation. So there can be some uh, questions, uh, clock stops, that uh, the authority very of often use. Uh, and that's also the reason why you have to be, well, to be well prepared when you submit a dossier because any small mistake, so for example, if you have some mistakes in the uh, vigilance, if you, uh, you forget a document in the CMARC or IFU, whatever. So of course, they will profit from that mistakes to stop the dossier and mm -hmm. stop the process. And mm -hmm. then, of course, that may increase the official delay. Mm -hmm. um, again, so 
well, 90 days between the submission and the advice from the HAS. Once you get the advice, then the press negotiation with the Economical Committee can start. And this is again a new 90 days process. Mm -hmm. So could you uh, share some insights about this negotiation process? So what are the key factors for success there? And what are the factors considered by authority? Of course, yeah. Because, um, it, it, if you want to submit, I, I would, the, the, the key factor, the key success factor is to first have the adequate uh, clinical evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's kind of a flexibility, a little flexibility, but uh, the pure methodologists from HAS, HAS they, they, want, they want the randomized control study, comparative study. So of course, we have to think about the comparator. You, if, you, if you're the first device to be on the market, then you have to compare to medical treatment or non-treatment. But if you are uh, second-hand or maybe uh, followers, then you have to def defend another clinical strategy and compare to existing reimbursed products. Um, so you have to be well prepared and very uh, and, and consider that point because if you are in a rush too rapidly and the uh, risk to be rejected mm -hmm. is high. And some, sometimes it's also very clever to think on clinical evidence, not only for CMR perspectives, I mean, in Europe, but also with uh, some uh, reimbursement. Um, of course, French reimbursement, because this clinical evidence is required upfront, but also don't forget that the other countries will one day or the other also request this evidence. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important to have this global, because, for example, quick in Germany, or NICE, they, they may also uh, not request it at first, but even if it's quicker to get to German markets, it may be also very quick to get rejected mm -hmm. if you don't have the clinical evidence. So first key of success is to be well prepared in terms of clinical evidence. Um, the second is also to have a very well-defined market access strategy. Mm -hmm. because, um, uh, because if you are a little bit weaker, or maybe not weak, but for certain devices, the randomized control study is just not applicable. So you have to be clever and probably organize meetings with the health authority in order to discuss it, to sensitize them to your device and potentially your difficulty or your choices. Um, so there are some meetings, strategic meetings, uh, early meetings, uh, pre-submission meetings. So just before you deliver your dossier, you can organize a pre-submission meeting with uh, either the Ministry of Health or maybe the HAS as well. So organize your strategy, your market access pathway, um, well defined. Um, and the third one, maybe we can talk later about that, but this is uh, to get prepared in, ter in terms of, of pricing mm -hmm. and uh, also organize it well, because of course the pricing strategy will first depend on the le evaluation level that you will get. Because depending on the level, if you get the bad mark, it will be more difficult to negotiate high price. Mm -hmm. And if you get a bet better result, uh, then it will be easier to negotiate a better price mm -hmm. with the economical committee. But this pricing strategy has also to be uh, prepared in advance and uh, and also then the process has to be smart enough because it's very specific and you get to be prepared. Can we discuss the pricing issue a little bit more in, uh, in detail? Uh, so what factors, so one factor is the level of added clinical uh, value for the technology. So what are other factors, for example, you know, investment in the clinical research, price of comparative technologies? So. Right. When you submit a dossier to the authorities, so they are Two parts. One is uh, the clinical part, which is addressed to the HS, but the, the other part is the economical and financial, financial part, which is addressed to the CPS in the same time, by the way, even if the CPS will not open the dossier right away. They will wait until they will get the evaluation report from HS. At that moment, they will open the dossier. So what is already in the dossier that the company has to prepare are 
uh, the prices in the other countries or the production uh, costs, uh, other costs. Uh, sometimes, even if it's Fran in, in France, it's not so important as it can be in other countries, specifically UK or Nordic countries. Um, uh, cost effectiveness studies, budget impact studies, I mean, are not so important. It, it, it's nice to have. It's okay, and in certain situations it may be good, I will tell you more about that. But uh, at first, uh, of course, you don't have to put them in the clinical dossier, and except in certain case situations, you should not address those cost effectiveness studies to the HAS. But you can, so, you can also include them uh, in your dossier right away, or maybe you may use that during the price negotiation process. So, uh, and also regarding the prices in Europe, um, it, it was just a kind of a, a formal uh, chapter to fill in in the dossier. But now it's, begin, it's becoming critical because they, 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 the, the French institutions talk to the other ones and they get the real uh, ASPs in the other country. So it's also, uh, it's important, for example, if, if prices are lower or higher in other European countries to be able to explain. All right. And so there, there are some explanations. Yeah, so it's important insight, right? So consider, uh, you know, general uh, pricing strategy for the whole Europe, right? Not just for France or for right. other countries. Yes, yes correct. Mm -hmm. For example, it's also important because they know that there's also a specificity in the French market is the prices are public. Mm -hmm. So, um, and of course, you don't have the same price strategy, let's say in Japan or US or whatever, and you probably don't want the French price if it's lower than expected mm -hmm. to be public. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you can negotiate with the French authorities. Mm -hmm. There is a, the facial price, mm -hmm. but then, then they will organize rebates mm -hmm. at the end of the year. So, or maybe in between, but so there's, a, there's this difference. So it's important to, to, to keep it in mind because for the company, if this facial price is key, because it's public, then they have to discuss it also with uh, the CPS, and it's part of the negotiation. But, um, okay, so to, to come back with the, the pricing negotiation, so the first point, the, the, the starting point, which will be the, uh, the ranking coming from the HAS. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a ASA 5, you have very little possibility to negotiate, and if you get breakthrough innovation recognition, like ASA 1, then you have a big flexibility to negotiate a much higher price. So, uh, but if, for example, you get a 5, it means for the Earth Authority that's, that they don't want to pay more than what they currently pay. Mm -hmm. And at, it can be good to, to, to sustain when you are in this situation with budget impact or little uh, uh, cost analysis that proving that, uh, for example, you do this technology, but you will replace uh, X stents or X drugs, etc., and be able to prove it. So if you are prepared and put it in the dossier, that will help. All right. So can we go back to the DRG pathway and uh, the pathway for creation of SICAM code? So what's the timelines for creation of the SICAM code? In yeah, um, okay, so... Uh, I told you that the situation today, and that has been uh, that been set up in uh, 2015, you can, if you have a device, no CCAM code, then you can put it in the same dossier, and the evaluation process for the CCAM code will be st will will start in parallel mm -hmm. of your evaluation, and that. W that 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 will save a lot of time. So, but if you don't have that, for example, you have a new technology, no LPPR, but uh, the only way to get reimbursed is to get a new DRG. Mm -hmm. This DRG does not exist. It means that if it's a new DRG, it's need it need it needs to be initiated by a new CCAM code. Mm -hmm. So then you have to create a new CCAM code. Then you will face a nightmare. Mm -hmm. 
because first you have to convince the medical society to prepare the dossier, but of course they don't have the, the, the task force to do it, so the company will probably do it or the consultants will do it uh, for, uh, for them. Uh, if they are only, if it's, easy, it's, easy, it's easier if it's only a one medical society, but if it's a new technology, sometimes there are mm -hmm. many, and sometimes they are also competing, and it may be a first challenge. So to have the medical society on board and organize the dossier for them. And then to submit it to uh, HAS, which will, uh, until a couple of years ago, they, it, it was an ongoing process. Now, this is a yearly uh, process. So for every year, you have to submit before end of June. And then they will look at their at their program uh, for the following year. So you have to wait until the end of the year, between June and December, to, to know whether you are eligible for their mm -hmm. uh, timeline or not. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, for example, um, they are, they, they, this year, for example, there they are, they are only be seven dossiers that has been accepted because many others were what we call seizing. So they, uh, they, these were uh, evaluation that are uh, executed by HAS because they are required by other health authorities. So they have the priority over this process. And sometimes if there are too many seizing, then there are very few places left for this evaluation. So that's the first problem. Then you need to, to get evaluated. And second problem, because of course, to come back to this CESIN issue, mm -hmm. for the CESIN, so the other evaluation that are required by the other health authorities, HAS, Ministry of Health, uh, Social Security, mm -hmm. they have to do this evaluation in six months. Mm -hmm. But for the trade, uh, for, the, the, for the medical society process, there's no limit. And the impact of that is that they will take in priority the dossier that has a time constraint and they will put on the second priority the other one. So it means that in reality, your dossier can last two, three, four years before it will be evaluated. And after that process, it gets to the social security in order to get priced. Because again, the CCAM code is not only a code for the DRG, but it's also a fee. And then becomes a strong negotiation between the physicians' unions and the social security, because this will be their future fee. Um, and uh, that process can uh, again last uh, many years. So in total, you may be between four and six years in total which is a nightmare, and that's, we will come to that point. So everybody knows that this act pro process in France is a major issue. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why, for example, there's a new experimentation called Article 51, mm -hmm. which we will talk about. But uh, one of these objectives of this Article 51 is to replace a part of the act system in certain mm -hmm. situations by a new, a new bundling mechanism. All right. So in some countries, there is a process to, to make a technical changes of the DRG, not, for example, big change like new DRG, but adjustment of the tariff, uh, things like that. Is it possible in France, is it possible to make a suggestion to ATA? Um, well, not directly. There is an office at the Ministry of Health which is responsible for these uh, price adjustments. Actually, there are two offices. There is a, a legal office at the Ministry of Health and there is a technical office which is called ATIH, mm -hmm. which is uh, the DRG agency, uh, the, uh, the DRG technical agency, which is the technical part. So this is the agency which will calculate the, 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 the case mix of the DRG and, uh, and, and, pub and publish the new tariffs every year according to the statistics that are collected in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So this uh, technical agency is related, so they will, for two reasons, for example, if, there's, if there is a technical issue 
with the DOG, they will address to the uh, Ministry of Health and they may change the tariff because of, of this technical issue. Second reason, um, again, medical society or hospital uh, association, they may have an issue with the DOG. Then they will address this issue to uh, these offices at the Ministry of Health. They will consider this issue and if it's recognized, then they may change the DOG or ad uh, adapt the DOG. Of course, if you as a company feel there is an issue, then you have to go through the medical society or the hospital association to contact this um, office at the Ministry of Health because it's very difficult to contact them directly. At least they, because they, 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 they think they, this is not, um, uh, I would say this is, there, there may be a potential conflict if the industry addressed uh, an issue immediately. So they will probably not consider it. Mm -hmm. All right. So we briefly talked about evidence requirements. Could you again just summarize uh, briefly what, uh, what kind of evidence is required when a company comes to the French market? Um, the, so, so it really depends on which product. Uh, and also the position of your product. So, for example, this is a new device, then <clears throat> uh, the uh, HAS will be a little bit more flexible because they will consider the uh, therapeutic need if there is, and also maybe the impact on the system. So if this new device is going to save, uh, to, to improve mortality, and there's no alternative treatment, then, of course, they, they may consider a retrospective study, or they may consider uh, even even a registry or uh, limited uh, evidence. Mm -hmm. So, specifically, if you're number one, mm -hmm. number two will be also uh, they may be a little bit flexible with number two because they don't like uh, monopoly. So they will be a little bit uh, uh, they will address the same flexibility with the number two. And then for the other companies which will come later, it will be harder because if they don't have comparative study, it's almost impossible to get into the market. Mm -hmm. So, uh, except if they are coming on new indication. So it's important, you know. So and to answer your question directly, is it's a little bit. But the general philosophy in terms of evidence is comparative study. But then, of course, you have to consider where, uh, depending on the indication and depending on your position versus existing treatment, how you have to build your clinical study. Yeah, and we discussed that it's in, in France, it's more about clinical evidence than economic evidence, right? Yes, so, yeah, yes, yeah, so the key is because the HAS uh, and these uh, uh, evaluation department uh, will only consider clinical evidence and even very, in the very few cases, the um, health economical aspect, uh, this is a pure, yes, a pure clinical for the APP. Mm -hmm. for, if it's a DRG, in the big majority, so, so again, so EFC mark, you can enter. Certain devices still, if they are, even if they are under the DRG, and because of, um, I, I would say, uh, new, neuroradiology devices or some uh, heart implants, even if they are on the DRG, they, has to, they have to be evaluated as well. Mm -hmm. But in the big majority, the devices which are on the DRG, they don't have to be evaluated. Mm -hmm.